The mooring equipment guidelines have always been based on clear principles and these principles remain unchanged for MEG-4. Although the MEG guidance is written for tankers and gas carriers, many of the principles can be considered for other ships. The aim of the guidelines is to minimise the risk of failure of mooring lines and all other mooring components, ensuring the highest possible levels of safety for crews. Right at the heart of our philosophy is the OCIMF standard environmental criteria, which are to be used when designing a ship for international trading. These criteria allow for 60 knots of wind from any direction, combined with three different current scenarios acting on the ship. You can find the details of the OCIMS standard environmental criteria in Section 3, Mooring Forces and Environmental Criteria. At the design stage, the ship designer calculates the mooring restraint requirements required to maintain the ship alongside the jetty. This is calculated using the OCIMF standard environmental criteria. In general, the mooring restraint requirements are divided by the number of mooring lines. This calculation provides the ship designer with a ship design minimum braking load of each mooring line known as the ship design MBL. The ship design MBL is the core parameter against which all other components of a ship's mooring system are sized and designed. Note that designing a ship to the OCIMF standard environmental criteria is in addition to the IAX minimum requirements. If you intend to design a ship, to the OCIMF guidance, it is recommended that you align the design and construction of mooring equipment, fittings and mooring lines to the MEG guidance from the outset. Understanding our mooring design principles is important for operators as well as designers. To prevent mooring lines from failing, ship operators should ensure their mooring winch brakes are maintained properly to render at 60% of ship design MBL. And a line management plan is used to monitor in-service conditions of mooring lines and tails so they're retired before failure. You will find improved guidance on selecting the right mooring lines in Section 5, Mooring Lines. If you're selecting a mooring line, engaging with the mooring line manufacturer will help you understand the most appropriate line type for the ship based on the operation and the intended service. Guidelines for the purchasing and testing of mooring lines and tails in Appendix B of MEG4 introduces a useful framework to support interaction between manufacturers and operators.